Growing up, I always looked at the pre-jury stage as the most boring part of a Big Brother season. Maybe it's because I wasn't fully invested in many of the players yet, or maybe it's because I was more interested in the later rounds and getting closer to watching a winner be crowned, but for whatever reason, I was a pre-jury denier. But now that I'm older and have dived into Big Brother way more than I ever anticipated, I realized just how wrong I was. The pre-jury stage is absolutely awesome. House dynamics are formed, torn down, reformed, blown up, and built back together time and time again. The house is at its most fluid, trust is at an all-time low because it is yet to be earned, and without the fear of needing to secure jury votes, you can feel free to blindside your heart away because any given pre-juror won't be determining whether you win or not. Throughout Big Brother history, we have had some really incredible weeks in the pre-jury stage, so in honor of Big Brother 24's pretty excellent pre-jury wrapping up tonight, let's take a look at the five best pre-jury rounds in all of Big Brother. That wasn't the biggest goodbye I've ever seen. <laughs> Listen, no comas left the house. She's not in the jury, so I didn't even have to like kiss her ass at the door and act like I care that she's leaving. I didn't even get off the couch. I didn't want to do any honorable mentions, but I just couldn't help myself. I felt that it would have been a disservice if I didn't mention them, so technically here is my number six and my number seven. My number seven goes to Big Brother 23's week one. It didn't make the list because storyline-wise, it was just an extremely chaotic week, and all of the craziness that happened ended up wrapping up the following week once Frenchie was evicted and Derek X found his place inside the house. But it's my favorite week one of all time, so here's the mention. As for my number six, that title goes to week two of Big Brother 11. The pre-jury of Big Brother 11 is like top three all time. It's absolutely phenomenal, and week two plays out incredibly. The person that flipped their vote the prior week, Ronnie, went on to win the HOH, and he tried playing both sides of the house. His plan was to backdoor Russell, but ultimately he backed down from doing so. But that was the wrong move, because right afterwards, he was caught playing all sides of the house, and it was basically the house against Ronnie in an explosive fight. It was an extremely exciting week too, and it's my sixth favorite pre-jury week of all time. Maybe even higher, who knows? Should have put his ass out. In my opinion, the fifth best pre-jury week of all time is week three of Big Brother All-Stars. The week started off with James Ryan winning his first ever HOH, and the outsiders and floaters were very annoyed that the season six alliance had power for the third week in a row. James, in a house filled with literally some of the best players of all time, decides to target Chicken George and put Dr. Will up as a pawn next to him. What the f***? The fact that I just said that is insane. And it was actually true and not just a smokescreen. Will, the best Big Brother player up to that point, was the pawn against Chicken George, the chubbier older guy who hadn't actually played the current Big Brother format before. After the veto draw happened, there was basically no hope left for Chicken George. Having to go up against James, Will, Boogie, Jace, and Kaser, I mean, come on. What could you expect? Well, you probably didn't expect Chicken George to be the biggest badass in Big Brother history and whoop their ass in the veto comp, taking every punishment like a champ and going on slot for the rest of the summer in order to win. It was glorious. However, this left Will on the block and possibly going home. But James decided to put up Jace, which, well, Jace didn't take too kindly to. At the veto ceremony, Will gave the most iconic veto speech of all time. He told all the house guests that he hated them. George used the veto to save himself, and James didn't back down and put up Jace. What some fans might not know is that Will actually almost went home this week, but by the end of the week, Jace got into a verbal argument with Marcellus, and the house unanimously evicted him instead of Will. Overall, it was the week of the underdog, and every part of the week was powerful and impactful on the rest of the season. Season six proved to be unbeatable once again. Congratulations, James. You're the new head of household. So who do you want out? It's Chicken George. Your thought is put me up and put up Chicken George. I was nominated four times on Big Brother 2. I couldn't care less. I think the fact that I enjoy being nominated makes me one of the most feared players here. I need someone that's going up as a pawn. Dr. Will's fine with that. Obviously, I have nominated the kind Dr. Will and the Chicken George for eviction. He's throwing me up against the Dr. Will. Dr. Will is the master of this game. And to go up against the doctor is not too good of odds. You and I are, you know, we both got back door because of our level of play in this game. But our battle is week from now, James. A while from now, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> I'm gonna give it everything I got to win the competition today. But once again, I feel like David fighting Goliath out here, but 
Hey, sometimes you never know what can happen. So we're going to a tiebreaker. How many consecutive days would you be willing to go on slop to win this veto call? Okay, sir, 15. I'll take them all. Congratulations, Georgie. You know, I'm thinking, okay, this morning while I'm gone home and all of a sudden, I'm back. <laughs> I'm staying. I wouldn't have backdoored you, James, ever. This is not a backdoor. It's backdooring. Marcellus, not so good. Don't even put me, don't even <laughs> what? put me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You are flying, and I'm telling you that to your face. I'll bet anything on it. I can't find an individual to hate, because I hate you all. There's no one I hate more than anyone else. This man is a badass. He went up against the five wickedest, freakiest Big Brother players, and he whooped their ass. Jason, if you wouldn't mind. <clears throat> By a vote of nine to zero, Jace, you have been evicted from the Big Brother All-Star house. Dude, don't hug me, it's so weird. At this point, I need to be clear that basically any of these four could be my number one. I love them all, and it was almost impossible for me to choose a favorite, let alone a distinctive ranking for all four of them, but I tried my best. At the number four spot, I have week two of Big Brother 20. I could have chosen any pre-jury week from BB20 and given a strong argument for why it belongs on this list, but I think week two had the biggest impact. After Tyler convinced Caitlyn to flip on her alliance in week one and vote to evict Steve, who better to win the second HOH than Caitlyn herself? So not only is the most unpredictable house gets the new HOH, but both sides of the house start taking pop shots at one another, namely Winston and Swaggy C. The week was pretty funny as it was basically just Caitlyn throwing out names of who to put up and Tyler just saying no in an attempt to control her HOH and backdoor Swaggy. Caitlyn puts up Scotty and Winston initially, which is hilarious because it definitely angered parts of both sides of the house. Tyler then went on to win the veto and save Scotty, but the Fate relief was likely very short-lived as Caitlyn, with tears streaming down her face, put Swaggy C on the block, absolutely blindsiding him and some of the others in the house. After that shocking move, Swaggy still felt that he had the votes to stay, but unfortunately for him, Level 6 plus their affiliates and Scotty, in his own desperate attempt to shift his position in his alliance structure, all voted Swaggy out, ending one of the wildest backdoor weeks of all time that was filled to the absolute brim with mind in solid diary room sessions. Plus, the impact this week had on the rest of the season cannot be understated. I flipped on my alliance, I last minute changed my vote, I evicted Steve, then I went HOH, I was seeing the signs, and it all just worked out the way it was supposed to. Party time. Yeah, cool meeting. These guys are idiots. Have they ever seen the show? I saw one, sir. I said cool meeting. With what? We can talk to Tyler? It's all good. We can't talk to Tyler? Oh yeah, you can do whatever That's you what want. That's what I thought. Alright then. I always thought Winston was a bitch. So perfect, I'm putting up sw Sam and Swaggy. No. I mean, well, perfect. No. Can I put my hand on that? No. I'm kinda nervous right now. Do you want Swaggy out? Yeah. I feel like that would, that would be really like a cool thing for my game. That'd be the coolest thing. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. I'm totally doing such a good job being HOH. I deserve a daytime Emmy. I deserve it. <laughs> This doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And see, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Immediately my stomach drops. I'm in panic mode. I have decided to use the power of veto on Scotty. I'm really sorry for those of you that are gonna be angry at me. So I'm really sorry, Swaggy. <laughs> I honestly can't even think. I have no idea what's going on in this house anymore. Uh, I appreciate the flattery, but I'm nobody's goon. I vote to evict Chris. By a vote of eight to four, Swaggy, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. Haley, specifically. I'm pretty sure she didn't vote for me today. Haley voted to keep you. Oh, she did? Yeah. So I, didn't, I didn't hug her. Wow. Hey, I noticed. At the number three spot, we have 
the one you were probably waiting for. Week three of Big Brother 24. After surviving by the skin of her teeth the first two weeks, Taylor needed a lucky break more than anything. Unfortunately for her, she did not catch said lucky break once Turner managed to beat Amira to become the week three HOH. Combine that with the new festy bestie twist that unknowingly made it so that the majority of the house would be practically immune from being evicted for the next three weeks, it was on pace to become one of the worst weeks in Big Brother history. It was basically the entire house as the majority against Taylor, and once Turner nominated Michael and Brittany for eviction with the plan to backdoor Taylor, it looked like the course for the week was already set in stone. But... Through the grace of God, a spark ignited inside Kyle and Joseph, and a shift inside the house secretly began. Alyssa let it slip to Kyle that there was a girls' alliance, which made Kyle start to question his place in the majority. And at the same time, Joseph turned 25, and he suddenly became Dan Giesling. Joseph put the pieces together that Amira was likely the one that led the charge to get his best friend Pooch evicted the prior week, and that he too was likely not in the core of the majority. Together, Kyle and Joseph rallied to bring in Monty, Turner, Michael, and Brittany into an alliance to band together against the old school alliance that Alyssa had informed Kyle about. And after Daniel went ballistic on Taylor for a misinterpretation and then put all of the blame on her for Paloma quitting the game, these outsider players put the pieces together that Taylor, the player that the house was convinced was this horrific bully, was actually innocent and that they were all being misled by things Paloma had said in the first week before she quit. So, these players brought in Taylor and officially formed the greatest redemption alliance of all time, the Leftovers. Michael and Brittany went on to win the veto, and at the ceremony, with half the house expecting Turner to put up Taylor and Nicole, he flipped things around, stood up for Taylor, and called out the house guests for treating her absolutely horribly, and made a real stand in the game by instead putting up Amira and Terrence. Amira was the one that the Leftovers believed to be the head of the snake, and she was the target. Shocked and blindsided, Amira's side of the house was distraught, but they were still convinced that they had the numbers to keep her in the game. However, the leftovers weren't about to back down now and get rid of f***ing Terrence after everything, so they kept the old school side of the house in the dark and come eviction night, they blindsided Amira and sent her packing in the pre-jury. It is one of the greatest house flips in Big Brother history. It was one of the rare times we actually saw players in the house realize an injustice and have the balls to make a huge flip and turn the tables on the enablers. And to top it all off, it was the beginning of Taylor and her lays. Typically, I'd be afraid of having a lot of recency bias, but I truly believe that this is one of the best pre-jury weeks this show has ever seen. Do you want to toss them? I'm assuming to Taylor. She is a complete wild card, mm -hmm. and I don't trust anything she says. Oh, for sure. When Brittany and Michael come off the block, I've got my eye on Taylor as well. Even though I'm Taylor's festy bestie, it is important that Michael and Brittany win the veto. That way, Taylor and I be the replacement nominees. I'm gonna say is whatever you need to do at any point, do what's best for you. If there's a point where you gotta tap out of the fight, don't even... Consider. That's not even part of my vocabulary, so... Trying to come at me with passive-aggressive behavior, I know how to stand up for myself. Hey, shift before Taylor's workout. Thing. Just stop. From this point on, just stop. With the lays? No, with your fake... You can f*** right off. You don't think America's watching all that? Daniel. No, stop. I will never forget what you did to Paloma. You think she didn't spiral because of you? You didn't add to that? And now you're trying to do it to Nicole? It seems like every time I try to connect with somebody, I'm just hurting them. Personally, I have never once witnessed a concrete instance in which Taylor bluntly disrespected somebody. It makes me feel bad. She doesn't deserve it. Those girls hate Taylor with a passion. If we built that trust with Taylor, like, I think she's loyal. I think who would win this game would be Amira. Yeah. We win the veto. Homeboy puts up Amira and Terrence. Amira is a huge competitor in this house, and she clearly has all her ducks in a row and is playing almost everyone in this house. I feel like you've been treated so poorly by so many people in this house, and I'm honestly sick of it. I have been looking for people to trust with everything. Just because you're strong is no grounds for us to test how strong you are. I'm not trying to break in here now. We need a name. The leftovers. Time for the leftovers to take over. <laughs> We have decided to use the power of veto to save ourselves. 
I'm sorry, but Terrence and Amira. There was clearly one target this house had, but I really don't want to add to the dog pile I feel like is going on in this house. And I really don't want to draw a line in the sand with saying this, but as the youngest one in this house, I don't feel like I should be the one to say that it's not okay. But here I am. I'm disappointed by his speech about bullying, and also I'm trying to figure out who the hell in this house he's aligned with that makes him think he has the balls to put me on the block. I wanted to tell you before you left. By a vote of seven to four, Amira, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. At the number two spot, we have week four of Big Brother 10. The week begins with an endurance HOH, and once it came down to three of the women, Dan gave each of them a true coach's pep talk. After April came out victorious and became the new HOH, Dan was informed that he would be America's player for the week. Gleefully accepting, Dan was first tasked with convincing April to nominate Jesse for the week. Dan went to work, and although April and some of the women started to get weirded out by Dan and correctly speculated that he could be America's player, Dan was successful and April nominated Jesse for eviction alongside Memphis. However, Jesse was not April's target, and he was instead the pawn to get Memphis out. After the nomination ceremony, Dan was tasked by America to hug someone for 10 seconds. Who did he get? Jesse, of course, the person he just put in work to get nominated. Dan went in with the plan and was beyond successful, and it was great television to watch. After this, though, things start to get serious. In the HOH room, Lieber felt that she wasn't being taken seriously as a player by April, so she left the room to go downstairs. Keisha followed her, and the two spoke their minds about the situation, but Jesse overheard this and, of course, ran it back to April to let her know. With tensions already high, this was all that was needed to send the house into complete chaos. People were screaming left and right, numerous fights broke out, the majority of people started to get involved, and after these countless battles, everyone got back together to sing the awkwardest happy birthday of all time to Keisha. This, my friends, was Keisha's birthday. With lines split down the middle perfectly, you had one side of the house ready to evict Memphis, but now you had the other side of the house ready to evict Jesse. And who did the deciding vote come down to? None other than Dan, who coincidentally didn't have control over his vote for the week, meaning that America would be the deciding vote on who went home and which side took power. Dan made deals with both sides of the house, and when it came to eviction night and the vote was three to three, Dan walked into the diary room and was informed that America had voted to evict Jesse. With Jesse out of the house and half the players blindsided, Michelle went out to win HOH to avenge Jesse, shifting the power back in their favor, and they made sure that everyone knew it. The week was the perfect combination of strategic gameplay, a split house that went bananas after the eviction, fun shenanigans with Dan as America's player, and the greatest fight in the history of the show with Keisha's birthday. I couldn't ask for anything more from a week, except for maybe a little bit of cake. If anyone wants a motivational speech from Coach Dan, let me know. I got him ready. <laughs> Those millions of people around the world say, Rennie can't do it. And it's up to you. I can't do it for you. I'm too old. Now get out there and go kick their ass. Go ahead, Dan. I will not let you have my club. I'll keep Jesse in the cage. <laughs> go on, <where> is he? <laughs> Who should Dan try to get nominated? Jesse. Yes, 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 yes. Don't look at me. You have the there. Ooh, I have nominated you, Jesse, and you, Memphis. Which house guest did America choose for you to hug for at least 10 seconds? Oh no! Jesse! Not there, dude. It's like, what's the point of even winning? No, 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 no. Dude, hey, no, no, where are you? Dude, hey, dude, it's alright. Hey, dude, 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 I'm gonna leave. I'm sorry, you guys. I got upset. My feelings were hurt. I felt as though April wasn't taking me serious as a game player. I was laying down for, you know, maybe my third or fourth nap of the day, and I was awoken by a screaming Libra. No, oh, she went in there. Keisha came in there. She goes, I can't believe she's talking to me like that. And then she, Keisha. Why like, is she so light? Hey, what did I do to her? No, no, I'm not the one that even said it. Wait, wait, wait. wait. 
little bitch. Don't walk into the room and throw things at me because you and I, we, we just don't get along as it is. Jesse. Oh my God. Talk to him. You're sticking fingers in people's faces, damn it. Okay, this it's is great. It's inappropriate. He's still yelling. It's over in hell. They would've heard me around the corner. You can say whatever you want. No, it's apparent that you start. You can't finish. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Anybody want cake? Three votes to evict Memphis. Three votes to evict Jesse. Let's see how America voted for you, okay? All right, let's see. America has voted to evict Jesse. Please go to the living room, Dan. All right, good job, America. Jesse, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. And now my personal favorite pre-jury week in all of Big Brother history is week three of Big Brother 6. One of the most influential and legendary weeks in all of Big Brother, this week was the start of what made Big Brother 6 so incredible. After Kaser's partner was voted out in week two, Kaser brought the thunder and came out victorious in the week three HOH. While the yet to officially formed friendship side was all pissed off and scared, Kaser had yet to make up his mind on a target, but once James lied to Kaser about not having a partner, Kaser went for two of the biggest threats in the house, James and Maggie. At the same time, Eric, the week two HOH, had made a deal with Kaser the prior week to ensure both of their safeties, and Kaser looked to be holding up his end of the deal. However, James finally decided to confess to Kaser that he and Sarah were partners, and because of this, one of the most legendary alliances of all time was formed. The Sovereign Six. The target shifted from James to Eric, the person Kaser had just given his word to that he would be safe. But for any of this to even happen, James needed to win the veto. Luckily, the veto comp was Night Moves, one of the most legendary vetoes of all time, and it was crafted in such a way that allowed for the Sovereign Six to throw it to James. After James won, Maggie, distraught, confronted Kaser and declared that he had just sealed her fate in the game. But Kaser, cold and cool as can be, looked her in the eyes and said, no, I sealed your partner's fate. Boom! Maggie was double blindsided. Not only that Kaser's new target was Eric, but that he also knew that they were partners. It's the most badass line in the entire history of the show, and it's absolutely marvelous. The week ended with everyone in the house confessing about their secret partners, and at the end of the night, after Eric was evicted, Maggie, the surviving player on the block, won the HOH to completely shift the power once more. So much of Big Brother history was made in this week. Iconic alliances were created, badass lines were said, and overall, it is my personal choice for the best pre-jury week in all of Big Brother history. Congratulations, Kaser. You are the new head of household. <laughs> can, uh, let them kiss my ass a little bit. Yeah. There's only two people left. You and Sarah. And I am not with anyone in this house. I've never shaken on agreements. I've never done anything. He wouldn't be so stupid to blatantly lie to me. I'm not gonna put you on. I nominated James and Maggie. I'm here to prove something. I'm here to show them who's the better strategist. When I was HOH, I made a deal with Kaser that if he won HOH, he would not nominate me. Sarah's my girlfriend. I knew it. Of course you knew it, you know? I realized at that point, the alliance I'd been working for was gonna come together. The reason I put James up is because he wouldn't come clean about him and Sarah. He finally did. It's a boyfriend. Just to try to get the power of veto. And we're gonna veto James off that'll give us five votes to take out Eric. You guys are my alliance now. I don't give a damn about anybody else in this place. You got the Jedi Council going full throttle against the Sith Lords right now. Okay, Howie, you're eliminated from the game, and James, you are the winner of the Golden Power of Veto. You sealed my feet. No, I sealed your partner's feet. I caught the bigger fish. I want you to look me straight in and tell him that you didn't take that. I can't do that. Okay, that's what I thought. Hey, thanks for keeping the deal. Appreciate that. You swore your life on it, right? I don't think that's in the Korean anywhere, but we'll go with it. You, you know, you're a dirty player. We're gonna get it back when you lied to me about, oh, I owe you one when I got the veto for you. Really? You told me in that room, you're like, if you ever backstab me, you're dead. Right. You backstab me, so it's shoes on the other foot. Okay. It's all part of the game, baby. And with that said, I'm gonna have to uh, nominate Eric. By a vote of five to four, 
Eric, you have been evicted from the Big Brother house. Sorry, Sarah. Congratulations, Maggie. You are the new head of household. And there we go. It was almost impossible for me to rank these weeks as there were so many good choices, but I tried my best. If you disagree with my choices, please let me know in the comments which ones you disagree with and share which weeks you would have chosen for the list. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, consider subscribing. I, of course, need to give that extra special shout out to all of my YouTube members who... Well, I'm having a hard time thinking of a good way to connect them to this week's topic, so just know that I appreciate them very much. And, as always, here's a clip for you on your way out. The Jay's face, America, do it. Cody, nice to meet you. Cody, nice to meet you. Ooh, Cody is hot, but honestly, he looks way taller on TV. Hi. Cody, nice to meet you. That's okay, I guess. Closer to my high.